Good morning and welcome to this uh, live Q&A session with me, Johan, my colleague Matthias. Good morning. Uh, last week, we hosted a webinar on the benefits of going 3D first on your e-commerce. And uh, we got a lot of questions. So we wanted to take this uh, moment to answer those questions. Uh, if you have any further questions, uh, just put them in the comment section and we'll answer them. Um, but Matthias, uh, to kick things off, uh, maybe you can just describe the concept of 3D first. Yeah, 3D first is when you lead with the 3D experience and you have any kind of 2D content secondary. So you put the 3D model and you give them the option to control what parts of the product that they want to look at right away using the finger movements or mouse movements. And you have the, the 2D content secondary, basically. All right. Um, and also a very common question that we get is if you can implement this uh, into any e-commerce platforms, is there any restrictions or? No, there's no restrictions. So our script is generic and works on all e-commerce platforms. And the way that the, this kind of component is built is that it lays on top of existing elements. So it just uh, uh, loads whenever you have finished the, lo the, the loading, basically. Mm -hmm. So it works with, with all. Okay. So, but this uh, does this affect the page uh, the page speed or how does it work? No, it doesn't because uh, we only load the feed model and the components when the user lands on the actual part detail page. You can see it here. So it's not a part of the initial indexing or uh, initial loading. So it just it takes a second or two when the user lands, but it doesn't interrupt the original experience because it lays on top. And only takes over once it's it's ready, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so, from an end user perspective, what's sort of the biggest uh, change when it comes to the data? When you look at the data, what's the biggest change that you can see? The biggest change is that when I speak with other customers, I hear that they have between five to ten percent that are actually watching all of their product images. Usually they have five and number five is usually the zone and only five and 10% are, are looking at that one. And so no, no wonder like why the conversion rate is higher on some, some brands. Uh, the biggest change here is that you give the control to the consumer and you give it back just like they are used to, like in a physical store. They pick it up and they look at the details that, that they want to look at and they can really twist and turn and, and zoom in and focus on, on the particular details that they, they, they are interested about. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest difference. You change the control. Yeah. Um, and also in the discussion with Robbie, uh, he did some quite remarkable uh, findings in his return rates. Uh, so can you please describe like how you guys measured uh, the return rates and also what was the impact? Yeah. So he, he managed to reduce his overall return rate by 29%. So he, with that said, he, he still has some returns that is size specific, but he completely eliminated all of the reasons that wasn't because of size. So before he, he had a, a quite a few remarkable returns that wasn't that the customer's expectations what it was different. They were saying like in direct communication or email that this doesn't look like it does on the website, so I want to return. And and we just realized that because on on one meeting he said like hmm. It was a while since I got this kind of return reason. I wonder what how, how that can be. So he actually made a manual investigation in his system, checking year over year the same period, and, and realized that the only change that he has done from uh, from year one to year two is that he implemented the FD model and the FD first experience. Everything else was the same: pricing, assortment, uh, theme on on Shopify. Everything was the same. So it was just a coincidence that he hadn't got that complaints anymore. Then he looked at the data and the result was 29% reduction. Yeah. Are you, um, did you expect that kind of results or, or what's your like initial uh, thoughts about that? I didn't expect so much, uh, to, to, to be honest. Uh, I, I was thinking that the return rate would reduce a little bit because the photos was traditional 2D photos. They were maybe a bit too polished and didn't really look like, like the freedom model, which is the most exact representation. So I was expecting some kind of performance, uh, but, but not that high. And, and not that like 29% is just the figure of the overall, but he has also said that he completely eliminated that reason. 
yeah. which is kind of remarkable because that's the, uh, another reason that he doesn't have to focus on. Now he can put all his time, energy, and money into solving the size return reasons instead. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, we also have a few other clients uh, that are using this 3D first approach. Uh, so maybe we can share some other examples as well. Sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a French brand called No Name. Uh, maybe you can describe a little bit more about what they have done here. Yeah, uh, what we see here is a, is a landing page that is gathering all of their sneakers that has 3D and virtual trial technology. So uh, you set the expectations right from, for, for the consumers right away. And I think it's a brilliant example because, I mean, 3D and virtual trial and an AR, what they really are is beside cool technologies is that they are tools. They're tools to help the consumers make a better purchasing decision. And I think it's brilliant to, to, to make a landing page and also have these icons that you see here in the top right corner to indicate to the user that when you come to this product, you have these kind of tools. Uh, and it's, it is really a unique selling point. I mean, for, for some, some consumers, it might be just finding the no name sneaker that they wanna look at. But for others, this could be the reason for why they buy a no-name sneaker instead of a Nike sneaker or Adidas sneaker just because they have these additional tools and it, it contributes to the experience. It's a really good example of that. And, and then when you come to the product detail page, you see a practical example of, of the 3D first experience that we talked about. You have it right away. So now you want to take control over experience. It seems to like the laces a bit more <laughs> than the sole and they can really zoom in and, and almost feel how the material is. Uh, and then we also have a pretty prominent uh, call to action in black here that says try the shoes on yourself, which on, on desktop triggers the QR code so people can scan it with the mobile phone or mobile it will open the camera experience instantly. So you, yeah. Yeah, so uh, if you want to try it, uh, you can scan this QR code uh, and then uh, you allow the camera and then you just point it down to your feet and then you should be able to see these uh, sneakers uh, on your feet. And for everyone watching the live stream on mobile, we can send a link later, uh, or you can go to Nodim. Yeah. Um, all right. So the, yeah, the, this is. Uh, I really love this implementation. Uh, I think it looks really, really good. It's brilliant. Um, we also have another example here uh, from a German shoe brand called Elton. So as you can see, it's a little bit different. Can you describe? Uh, yeah, what they have done here. Yeah, they have decided to, to put the 3D viewer on top of the existing images. Uh, so slightly different, um, still yet as effective. Uh, we are seeing similar interaction rates. I was mentioning uh, the 5 to 10% before on, on, on 2D content and the rate of everyone watching all of the photos. And the, the general benchmark when it comes to the 3D first experience is 75%, meaning that 75% of the users that can actually begin and twist and turn the, the 3D model. Uh, so is that also something you expected it to be that high the usage or? I, I didn't know actually what to, what to expect. I mean, 75% is, is incredible high uh, if you compare to the photos because it's two different technologies, but essentially what it is, is that the product, the, the, the consumer are experiencing the products. So I don't think we were anyone here within these four <laughs> walls was expecting so high, uh, but but I think it's a it's a result of a of a, a high demand on the market from the consumers, and also great UX and UI implementations from our customers. Yeah, and also uh, we have another example here of a Swiss brand uh, called Joya. So as you can see, it's a little bit different here as well. Mm. They have also uh, done one more extra layer. So they lead with the 3D model. Up in the top right corner, you have a, a button to trigger the virtual trial. But then they have also leveraged the video technology that we have and integrated that into the same toggle component. So for the ones that doesn't want to uh, spend energy on twisting and turning themselves, they can just enjoy this 10, min uh, 10 second video clip and, and still see the shoe equally good. Yeah, I think it's uh, really nice to give the consumer like the option to choose however they want to like yeah. explore the products themselves. I think that's a really good example of uh, you can give the control to the users. Exactly, exactly. Plus one. Um, 
Yeah, so these are uh, some examples of brands that are uh, using uh, 3D first already. Um, so when it's a quite a common question we get is around like uh, 3D versus virtual trial, how that affects uh, the conversion rate. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you have, can you elaborate a little bit more about that? Mm -hmm. What we see usually is that we have an 80-20 uh, ratio between usage on 3D and usage on virtual trial. Uh, with that said, as there are lower data on the virtual trial, we also have a high probability of high conversion. So we see around uh, uh, one point uh, in, in percentage wise higher than the 3D. Uh, with that said, I think you get the best effect when you have them in combination because they really have different purposes. And we can just go back to the traditional offline store behavior. Uh, you see something on the shelf, which is the product listing page. Uh, you, you pick it up, which is the 3D, 3D first experience. Uh, first, before you want to try it on and, and really make the selection, is this the, the shoe I want? Obviously, you need to get a good understanding of the product. Do I like the color? Do I like the material? Is the silhouette and the sole uh, the, the right for me? And when they have explored that in the 3D viewer, then the step is to, to try them all. Like, do they fit with yeah. my trousers? Is <clears throat> it my type of silhouette once again? And obviously, then you have a size aspect as well. So I think they're best in, in, in tandem. But then we see a slightly higher conversion rate when people are using the virtual trial as well. But that's, of course, as well, because you can almost uh, paint it as a funnel. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah, and I also, also think that makes sense for to just give the consumers the option yeah. to view it however they want. If yeah, it's yeah. video, if it's 3D, if it's virtual trial, to give that option yeah. uh, when exploring products. Some people have uh, very difficulties to imagining how something will look on them. So this yeah. takes away all of those questions and they yeah. can see themselves. Yeah. So now you have uh, onboarded around 50 brands mm -hmm. uh, in implementing 3D and uh, virtual trial in their online experience. So as a new brand, maybe they're looking into this, like what can they expect from these kind of technologies? First of all, you can expect that consumers will experience your products, not just look at it, and they will experience the entire product just the way they want it. So just that in itself is a prerequisite for even you to be able to convert them, uh, which is a, a, a pro, uh, a, a very a big benefit, basically. Secondly, we have seen now on, on all of the brands that have implemented this kind of experience that we have either affected the conversion rate up or we have reduced the return rate down. So I, I would almost dare to say that you can expect that. Mm. Uh, because of a better customer experience. So as long as you, you make good products, <laughs> good shoes, and, and they look like it should, uh, then, uh, then you should expect some kind of positive performance. Right. So in the uh, chat with Robbie last week, um, you also guys talked about uh, how he leveraged the 3D mold in marketing. Mm. So, and we also, I think you showed an example. We can pick it up mm. here again. <laughs> this is so, so cool. yeah. So, how can brands uh, enable, like, utilize 3D models in their marketing, for example? Yeah. Uh, first of all, this is so cool. I, I wish we could have the sound here because it's the English national anthem for the football team. Anyhow, um, I would like to say that the 3D model itself, uh, you, you should see it as a key. And it's a key that opens up so, so, so many doors, both econ-wise, marketing-wise, production-wise. Here is a practical example. Robbie uh, and Zach Footwear have just got hold on the raw 3D model. And he found a very talented artist uh, in, in Europe that was able to create this from two assets. Having the raw, raw drone, drone footage of the Wembley Stadium mm -hmm. and then having the 3D model. And, and this is the result. And we see these kind of CGI creatives all over the place on, on Meta right now, and this is trending in viral. And you, this has been quite difficult before, and, and this is something that agencies has been charging oh, thousands and thousands of dollars mm -hmm. because the freedom model is the hard part. Luckily, we have streamlined that. We have made it easy. Robbie found a guy. He made this for a couple of hundred bucks, I think it was. And, and yeah. Here's an announcement of, of a new product. And I think it's a pretty cool way of, of making an announcement. And this is just one way. Uh, the, the sky is the limit. Only the yeah. Im imagination sets the limit. Yeah. So is there other uh, like any other examples that you can tell about how 
other brands have utilized the 3D models in their marketing? Yeah, I know that some brands have actually generated like videos where we have the, the shoe spinning. So obviously uh, Meta hasn't really catched up yet. So, so you cannot actually have a 3D experience where you can control it yourself as a consumer. So for those kind of, kind of channels, our customers have like re rendered a 360 video mm -hmm. that shows the product in a new way instead of just having a, a one angle pack shot. Uh, another way, uh, uh, maybe a more simple way than this, is that you can actually uh, leverage the augmented reality placement feature that we have. So I know that Robbie he's going to this uh, 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 this game on on fourth of March, I think it is England. No, April, England versus Brazil, and he's actually going to place the shoe uh, in augmented reality outside the stadium where mm -hmm. people is walking around. Mm -hmm. So that's just an easy way to create yeah. this kind of viral content as well. And then obviously you can also leverage the freedom model to just make regular photos, regular campaign material. Yeah. I think we have a few examples of that. Yeah, exactly. Well. That's actually one of the questions that we got from the webinar, like, because uh, Roby uh, talked about how expensive the process is of creating normal like product shoots mm -hmm. for your e-commerce mm -hmm. and how he like how we have helped him to produce those images. So we can uh, show an example here. So all of those images are created from the 3D model. Can you describe that a little bit more? Yeah. So um, imagine like a, a, a traditional physical photo studio. Uh, you have your lightning, you have your backdrop, you have your camera, uh, you have whatever you have in there. Uh, it works the same way for us. Um, the, the difference is that we start with creating the, the 3D model, then we put it into a digital studio, and then we can more easily and flexible uh, adjust the parameters uh, on the go. So uh, you, you create the video model once and then you reuse it for all of the different setups that you want. So pack shots like Robby had, that's one use case. Here you see another brilliant example. We can put it with other kind of elements. So the, the biggest difference is that one is reusable, the other one isn't. And, and that's why uh, Robby both saves some, some time and cost uh, changing those but also now have more opportunities going forward. Yeah. And I also think like the, the quality of the 3D models, if you're gonna render product images, makes a huge difference mm. because you really want to show like the photorealistic textures in the image mm. or even colors. the 3D models or AR or whatever. Mm. So uh, uh, yeah, I think this is a few examples of, uh, yeah, how you can, render really good product images from the three demands as well yeah um and i mean like, like this examples imagine if you if you like these ones and you want to create them doing it the old way how the hell are you supposed to find these kind of boxes with the exact tiny yeah. kind of green nuance and have this lighting and everything like that it, yeah. it's very very time yeah, yeah, yeah. while this takes a, a few minutes to to create yeah um and also uh, Robbie mentioned that he was a little bit scared in the beginning to go ahead with the 3D first approach. Mm -hmm. Like, what can you, what can you say about those who are maybe a little bit afraid of, of trying it out? Mm -hmm. Well, I, first of all, I don't think you can be as scared as Robbie was because <laughs> he was the first, so he is breaking the ice, so to say. Uh, secondly, I, if, if you're afraid and if you have your doubts, I will start small and uh, test small and then let the data show the way. Uh, I think we have shown three brands now. Uh, we can also give like 20 more examples. Uh, and, and we have now a really re kind of revolution and movement that is currently paving the way for other brands to join this, this train as well. But if you have your doubts uh, anyways, start small, test, and let the data show the way. Okay. Um, and also, um, if there is any shoe brands watching this stream mm -hmm. and are interested, mm -hmm. is there any way to get started? Like how, how do you get started? Uh, how you get started? Uh, one way is to send us a shoe. Uh, you can have a free trial shoe and we can make it and you can see it yourself in the self experiences. You can even try to implement it. Um, it's very easy and um, you just ship it to us and we produce it, we send it back as is and the script implementation itself takes no more than one hour um, and, and then you have, 
have it there. Okay. So yeah, maybe we can put the link in. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, you can send one of your best-selling shoes. We'll turn it into 3D. We'll make it available for you to uh, embed into your site mm -hmm. for free. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think like. Other than that, uh, I think that's all we had for today. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to uh, me or Matthias on uh, DM here on LinkedIn. Uh, otherwise, uh, we wish you a very nice day. Let's double check if we have any questions in the chat. Yeah, let's see. You don't see that window here, so. No, that's some fire noise. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, if you have any questions, uh, just uh, send us a DM and we'll take it from there. Otherwise, uh, we wish you a very nice day. Have a nice Wednesday. Bye.